It's Newberry Thursday! Woo! Oh, I thought it was Master Pairings. It is. Right? Oh, I was confused. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're at GABF, and um, obviously Matt's not here, and John's not here. I mean, John's here. He's over there. But, um, yeah, we're so we're just kind of, we're going to go get drunk and party. So what we're going to do is we're going to hand off Newberry Thursday. We're going to enjoy a lot of fabulous beers. <laughs> we will party. There will be some inebriation. But I don't Responsible say, inebriation. Yeah. <laughs> um, but amazing. But as far as Newbury Thursday goes, we're handing the uh, we're handing the, the thing over to Bill this week, and we're gonna let him do some, just a series of master pairings. Yeah, it's gonna be great. There's a lot of great uh, pairings I have lined up. It's gonna be a fun time. Something about donuts. I heard yes. donuts. Uh, glazed and confused donuts. You're gonna want to look them up next time you're in Denver. Right now we're at Fresh Craft. Um, we're gonna be filming an episode with Jason and uh, Lucas, who is two two brothers who are two of the owners, two of the three owners. Later we're gonna go over to Falling Rock. And you and Chris are going to do some yeah. stuff there. Chris Black, not Chris White, my yeah. cigar guy, but Chris Black, um, the owner of Falling Rock, the official, unofficial mayor of GABF. I'm going to do a cigar episode because you know when I go to fall, when I go to GABF, 25th year, a lot of beer, obviously, a lot of good food, but a lot of cigars. Mm -hmm. So my voice is a little hoarse. <laughs> A lot of whiskey. A lot of whiskey. A lot of whiskey at a beer festival, which is weird, but it happens because Denver's a great whiskey town as far as also being a great beer Oh my town, God, so. they have a place called uh, Pints Pub, which probably has the largest single malt scotch collection outside of Britain. That is amazing. Uh, they have a lot of other great beer bars. They have uh, Brown Palace, Churchill's, my favorite cigar place, unless I'm smoking out front of Falling Rock. So uh, enjoy the episodes, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairing. 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 I'm your host, Bill Sysak. We got Steven Johnson from New Beer Thursday. Ben Hofdahl and... Josh Schwab from Glazed and Confused Donuts in Denver. Bill Schilling from Glacier Design Systems. Jason and Lucas Forgy from Fresh Craft here in Denver. And King Black, better known as Chris Black, the owner of the Falling Rock. If you notice my red eyes, it's not because John's pr production values have gone down, it's because it's GABF, Great American Beer Festival. This is my 25th year, and it seems to be catching up to me. It means a lot, a lot of beer, a little bit of sleep. So out late last night, and uh, now we're ready to shoot first thing in the morning. So we're at the world famous Falling Rock. It's GABF still. We're rocking some more shows. Still? Um, still. Yes. I thought it ended. Two more like, days. It never more ends. Days. Okay. Never ending. <laughs> we're sitting here at Fresh Craft, which is on 1530 Blake Street. Great, great, great beer bar. How long have you guys been up? Uh, just over three years. This is our fourth GABF. It's a very cool place. I've come every year since they opened. Right now, we're here to talk about Glazed and Confused and some great pairings I did. So it's crazy around us. That's why I'm talking a little loud. Um, today, we wangled Chris for literally 10 minutes in between his events so we can do a little quick master pairings. We're here doing one of my uh, beer and cigar master pairings. I couldn't think of a better beer to do than a local Colorado legend. Uh, great Divide right here in Denver. This is their old ruffian, their barrel-aged old ruffian. So it's a barley wine, and instead of a bourbon barrel, it is a bourbon barrel by all means. It's Stranahan's Whiskey, which is right here in Denver also. We have the Man Beer from Bull and Bush. It's a 6.5% hoppy amber. And with it, we selected a newer dish on your menu. What is that, Chris? So this is our uh, new tamale plate. Um, our kitchen manager, Marcelo, his mom comes in every Monday morning, makes anywhere from 10 dozen to 20 dozen uh, tamales wow. for us. We've already lit. Uh, Casa Magna Oscuro, uh, Manny Casada is an amazing uh, tobacco guy. He has this cigar in the regular format, was a 2008 cigar of the year for cigar, cigar aficionado. The Obscuro is more intense, has licorice earthy notes. We're gonna enjoy it. Josh, you wanna tell them about the uh, yeah. first donut? Let's talk about the uh, salted caramel first. We call it the sweet and salty. It's a uh, creamy caramel glazed donut, and then it gets topped with uh, fresh Mediterranean sea salt. Awesome. 
Uh, the next one over here is my carrot cake. So that's a cake style donut, which is different from yeast raised. Yeast raised uses yeast to raise the donuts are a lot lighter, right. fluffier cakes. Like are a, a classic bit... glazed disease. Exactly. Raised, right? um, the cakes are a little bit more dense, but not not so much where it's heavy. And then, uh, so that's a carrot cake donut with a vanilla cream cheese frosting and then our famous ginger walnuts. And then last but not least is our most popular uh, seller. It's called the Breakfast of Champs. Nice. Maple bacon infused glaze with crunchy bacon on top. People flock to find me for this donut. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're gonna start off with the first pairing. Um, what I've selected for it, I'll, I'll let Lucas talk about the food first, actually, I guess. Can you tell us a little bit about this wonderful looking dish? This is our red coconut curry seafood stew. Um, it's a... <laughs> it's the greatest <laughs> sounding thing ever. <laughs> so. So we have a red curry and coconut seafood base with uh, some onion, celery, and cremini mushrooms in there. And then there's PEI mussels, Scottish salmon, and shrimp. And it's accompanied with a side of sticky rice, a cilantro cream. Looks awesome. Before I let everybody do it, we're gonna do a quick cheers. Um, this is Boulevard Tank 7. It is an 8.5% per cheers. Uh, farmhouse ale or saison. Cheers, everyone. I'm gonna pair today with this our Stone and Enjoy by 10, 25, 13 IPA. Uber Fresh, double IPA, 9.4%. But if you can't find this, any of the great double IPAs you can find in the Colorado area will go perfectly with this donut. What happens is the hops are definitely bring out the carrot notes in, in the uh, donut itself, and then the cream cheese frosting will play beautifully and change the, the citrus and floral notes into the hops and really bring those out. Since it's Colorado, uh, everybody here likes to smother everything in green chili. So it's got like, it's, these are like hatched green chilies. Nice. And it's a pork green chili they can put all over the top of it. And we are selling the cred out of them. Awesome. Well, let's do our traditional cheers. Cheers. So we can try this lovely beer. Cheers. cheers. Let's have a cheers, gentlemen. Cheers to GBF and good, good draft lines. Here's the good people. That's right. Cheers, cheers everybody. Cheers. cheers. Donuts and bacon. That's right. <laughs> You do it either way, donut or beer. So this is sort of a Thai meets Belgian sort of thing. Yeah, you could say Certain that. great things, coconut, a lot of the spices, spice elements that are in Thai food are very classic, especially in saisons. Mm -hmm. And this is a classic example of something along the lines of a, of a great DuPont style saison. Uh, whether he has anything in it or not, it still has those peppery notes. I don't know if he added any uh, botanicals to it. I know it's named Tank 7 because they have a uh, persnickety fermenter. Uh, uh, John Bryant, JB, told me one time called Tank 7, and everything just came together perfectly when they were trying to create this beer. So it's great, it's dry, it's peppery. Uh, we're going to kind of do this family style, so I'm just going to take a it? spoon and. No, no, I'm just going to. I'm digging in. I'm not gonna double dip. I'm going in one time, and I'm just gonna pat. We're gonna slide this around. What's the uh, the stuff on top? Not the cream cheese, but the uh, ginger walnuts. Ginger walnuts. Yeah, we we um, we probably sell those by themselves. They're fresh, amazing. fresh ginger, amazing. fresh everything. Yeah. So most people don't think a uber hoppy bitter beer, which are normally paired with very spicy foods, uh, would go or cut through really rich things. But this is perfect for it oh, yeah. because it cuts through the richness and plays really well. Delicious, right amount of uh, heat, but beautiful from the coconut. Intense flavor, the shrimp's cooked perfectly. The mushroom comes out, you get this umami. It's just a great thing. This, I can see this being perfect for a cold winter day here in Denver. A lot of fruit notes. Yeah, definitely. Big hops, malts, fruit coming across. You get uh, some nuttiness, but you get, um, wow, what is that? You almost get like cherry. But then you get like a, an apricot or something. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. more apricot, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I can see a little cherry. Well, we're doing this family style, so we're all just going to dig in. So I'm going to slide it over here and take a quick bite of tamale before Steven gets to it. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> what? I like this a lot. This this does have a lot of the earthy tones. You get that little hint of licorice on the back end, which I think is I think really get more accentuated intense with uh, this is a perfect the old match ruffian. Too. Yeah, the old ruffian really brings out a lot of that little, like, not the not the anise qualities of the licorice, but the sweetness of the licorice. And I'm getting a lot of leather. Yes, too. exactly. So, and the old ruffian is just vanillins, coconut, uh, such a great winter beer. fruit. 
Yeah, but these are a great combination. I was, I was, as I was saying earlier, I started smoking cigars the same time I started drinking beer. And it's always been a wonderful combination. You're always, but some are better combination than others. This is a fabulous combination. I think we should do that one next. Sure. Here, right? So now you don't have a brick and mortar yet, but that's in process, right? Yeah, we are going to be signing a lease this week. Uh, we're going to be somewhere down uh, by Cherry Creek, uh, mostly on Leedsdale. Uh, okay. We, we're not going to give out the address quite yet, um, but uh, yeah, uh, you want to make sure you got it. Yeah, but by you know this time next year, we'll definitely be up and running. We hope to be opening sometime in uh, February or March, though. This is the sweet and salty. It's a yeast raised donut. It's going to be a little bit different than this, a little bit lighter. Um, it's not super light and fluffy like um, some of maybe our competitors out there. We got a little chewiness to it, which I like. Um, it adds a little bit more Reddit texture. Reddit Krispy Kremes. Reddit, you guys. Uh, <laughs> all right, fine. Krispy Kreme. <laughs> uh, but we got a nice creamy caramel on top, and then we do the Mediterranean sea salt for the nice sweet and salty effect. So nice. I'll awesome. start you off, Dr. Bill. Oh, those are delicious. Oh, my goodness. Does she stop in California at all? <laughs> I've been buying tamales wow. from her for over a decade, and there's, she does the best job. There's this awesome warmth from the green chilies that just covers your palate, nice heat. And then this beer, even though it's hoppy, it has nice residual sweetness. And so what's happening is beer, craft beer, the bitterness can really accentuate heat. So the bitterness oh, yeah. is accentuating the heat on the palate, on the back and mid palate, but the hoppiness uh, is playing that way and then the sweetness from the beer from the malts is calming the front palate where you normally would get a burn on the tip of your tongue and your lips I'm not getting that at all so it's a really fun interplay it's really complimentary what do you think I'm loving it that's that's really why uh, this is one of my favorite beers to pair with something that's a little on the spicy side yeah no doubt it's because it plans both the the contrasting and complementary effects the beer just becomes really bright it has a peppery notes and it just kind of wraps around your palate and lets lets all the, the curry shine so they kind of complement each other really nicely. Nice. The effervescence kind of cleans the... Yeah. The, the great thing about beer, of course, as uh, all my regular viewers know, carbonation, scrubbing bubble, cleanses the palate. And Saisons and tri Belgian triple styles are great as far as the bubble structure and as far as cleansing that palate. They just really do a great job of doing that. Sweetness, which will... Uh, handle the hottest heat. Uh, caramelization, which matches the fancy chef term that Chef Lucas would know, uh, the Maillard reaction, non-enzymatic browning of breads and meats, is why you take a thing like a brown ale with our next pairing, uh, because the roasted grains will go perfectly with the, the searing of the meat that he did on those sliders. And then also there's bitterness, which cuts, and there's bitterness in this, and it cuts through the richness of fats, proteins, meats and cheeses and also desserts. We're into our middle third. I think the flavor's intensified. More, more leather, more spice. A lot of oak. The woodiness. Woodiness. Yeah. I get the woodiness. They actually age these for a period of time in, in, in cedar-lined uh, rooms, so they definitely pick up some of that nuance. Right. Uh, the beer's really opened up. The fusel alcohol notes have burnt off as it's warmed up. Oh, this such is huge a raisin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So what I paired with this one is our stone oak smoked Old Guardian barley wine. It's 11.4%. There's no small beers for breakfast today. Um, <clears throat> we use 25% uh, oak smoked malt. So it gives us really nice caramel toffee notes right off the bat, wow. tannins, and it should just go amazingly with the donut. I like nice the time. fact that the, the texture of the donut, you're right, it's not overly fluffy, it's not airy. You, you're getting something here. There's, A little texture, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's just, but it's just, it's like fresh, fresh bread, just, you know, it's amazing. Ugh. Whereas the Enjoy Buy was very contrasting, this is very uber complimentary. It's just, Caramel and toffee, crime on the donut and beer. Yeah, I get the smokiness. A lot of smokiness. Saltiness. Perfect. Really Which we're gonna get saltiness that swings, too. slides through, so it's just beautiful. Mm. Chef, would you like to tell them about the next dish? Uh, these are our meatloaf sliders. So it's a house-made meatloaf. It's a pork and beef mixture. Um, there's some caramelized uh, tomato paste in there. 
peppers and onions, and it's served on a brioche roll with our house-made cashew pesto, awesome. smoked onion ketchup, and caramelized onions. Nice. These are our spud puppies on the side. Spud puppies? Yeah. <laughs> Mashed potatoes, deep fried bread? Uh, yeah, basically. Okay. Nice. I was trying to make a pota uh, tater tot that was crispy on the inside and out, mm -hmm. and I did it at my house, and it exploded in my face, so I decided <laughs> to put some binding agents in it. Nice. That's kind of <laughs> so meatloaf. I hate to laugh. Lot, lot of, lot of, uh, it sounds like a wonderful night. A <laughs> lot of better too. places are starting to do uh, meatloafs. They're elevating them from what you're, you're used to have with your mom. Uh, and they're just amazing. Uh, meatloaf is a great vehicle to put different types of meats in there. Mm -hmm. You can play with it and do. You said this is pork and beef? Pork and beef, yes. Yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, with that, I pair... Um, Oscar Blues, One Nut Brown. It's also known as Leroy, so I'm wondering if there's this great backstory about Leroy only had one nut, I don't know. But oh, it can be known as me. Oscar Blues Leroy or Oscar Blues One Nut Brown, so I'm just really intrigued in that. The, I didn't the get an answer. song like the great Leroy Brown, isn't there a song like that or something? There is, but... That's probably not it. It could be, but yeah. I'm going with the one nut theory. <laughs> I did a pairing with Garrett Oliver a few years ago, and he was wanting to, uh, he's like, well, what, what would, would you be interested in pairing with? And you know, what's your most popular burger? I'm like, well, it's actually the black and right. uh, black and blue burger. Right. And he's like, well, what do you want to go with? And I'm like, well, this IPA. And he just kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And I'm like, yes, because, yeah, the hops will kind of like really accentuate that. Right. But uh, with a little bit of a backbone of it, it oh, really yeah. kind of works. Well, uh, Garrett, Garrett Oliver, he knows about beer and food pairing? Um, well, I think so. Yeah. I mean, he says he does. Yeah. He wrote a book uh, <laughs> called uh, Brewmaster's Table. It's probably the seminal beer and food book. Um, uh, he's definitely one of the foremost uh, beer and food pairers. Um, like people like myself, Stephen Beaumont, Lucy Saunders, Sean Paxton, yep, the Bruce Show. Absolutely. Shop. So, uh, hey, hello. It's all really fun. Uh, we all have different ways we attack things. That's why he looked at you funny, because that's not the way he does. Right. So, he has kind of the primer where it's the book where it's this is chocolate, this is stout. You know, he's right. teaching people how to pair, mm -hmm. which is great and which is really important. And then you start, once you know the basics, you take it to levels like what you did with the black and blue burger and the IPA and things like that, where you could take it to another point. So this is our uh, Drew Curtis, Will, Will Wheaton, uh, actually I think it's Drew C Curtis, Greg, we have very long titles for our names for our beers. Drew Curtis, Greg Cook, Will Wheaton, Stone, Farking Wheat, Woot Stout. And what it is, it's a collaboration with Will Wheaton from uh, Stand By Me, and oh, really? yeah, he's a home brewer, and uh, Drew Curtis. I think his, does most, his most popular role, though, was a guest on New Brew Thursday. Oh, there you go, Steve. <laughs> or, or a little thing called Star Trek. They came out with uh, our owner, Greg, and they made a beer. This beer is 13.2%. It has wheat, rye, pecans, because Drew's from... Uh, they all wanted to add something. So Drew is from um, Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky, thank you. And so he brought pecans, and they did 25% of it in bourbon barrels. So this is my uh, most popular donut right now. Besides, we also do a puffy nut, which is a form of a half croissant, half donut. Been very popular. I'm yes. sorry, but puffy nut is the greatest thing ever. Thank That's you. that thank word you. alone. We, that, that, is, that is my Indigo Girls cover band. Let me tell you, we've done, uh, we've done everything from a peaches and cream to a uh, Irish car bomb puffy nut. Nice. So we've, we've, we're really... We've gotten hitting. some slack on the name, though. Yeah, we're, we'll definitely... I love puffy nut. Do you not ever change that name? No, more on the uh, other part. Irish of car bomb. Ah. All right. Well, I'm going to go in here. So uh, oh, drinkers know what we're talking yes, about. Yes, exactly. I think this is... this Right here, this kind of epitomizes GABF for me. Smoking a good cigar, drinking a great beer, like just chilling and relaxing. Because GABF is so run, 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 run. When yeah. you have these opportunities to come to Falling Rock or some of these places where you can enjoy a situation like this, do it. Like, and there's a cigar place right down the street. You can pick up a cigar, come over here, and just relax. Yeah, that works totally. So such a big beer, but I wanted to bring it out. I knew the pecans would come into play, the spiciness Ooh. of the rye. There is alcohol heat, because let's face it, it's 13.2%. Mm -hmm. But the sweetness balances that perfectly, and it plays. And then you get that great bacony goodness. I love Oscar Blues. It's one of my favorite Denver breweries. Or, yeah, Denver. Denver-esque. Denver <laughs> Lions. 
uh, Colorado breweries, but they just they do a fantastic job with the different like basic styles that they brew, and I just I really have always appreciated that. So this is five percent classic brown ale, got that nice sweetie, sweetness, got some nice nuttiness. Um, looking forward to trying it with this uh, masterpiece. So this is almost like a tomato jam you have on here, huh? Um, it's a house-made ketchup that we oh, um, nice. puree smoked garlic and onions into, and a couple other spices and stuff like that. I love the way that this the the bun the the bun is super super fresh. So I mean, it's like it's kind of got a hard outside, but it's super soft, super like complements the nice texture of the the meatloaf. Um, whatever seasoning and the house-made ketchup you've got, that's just phenomenal. It just makes the it makes the meat flavor just explode and just. It's delicious. There's a little bit of fruitiness to the uh, to the brown ale, yeah. And I feel like that comes out with oh, yeah. the, that tomato uh, flavor that you were talking about. Yeah. I love ambers and brown ales because they cut through the acidity of tomatoes, especially when it's like a, a red sauce, mm -hmm. like a classic red sauce. So I, I usually think more like pizza or Italian sauces, but ketchup falls right into that, especially a great house made ketchup because it's not overwhelmed with fructose and all right. that crap. Exactly. So when you make house made, it's going to fit in there too, and it's going to really bring out. Nice, uh, nice hints of sweetness and that fruitiness, like you talked about, which plays really well. The tamales are fantastic. Um, if you ever come here and they're on the menu, order them immediately, yeah. no matter what you decide to pair it with. But it does work really well with this beer because it. I think this for an IPA, this beer has a lot going on for well, it. I think it's an amber. Well, they call it their IPA. But it, yeah. it's really kind of a hoppy amber. Style, we it, know it's an amber. It's, <laughs> less than, it's less than it's an IPA, but that's what I'm getting at. It's like they've got so much going on with this beer that it kind of crosses styles a little bit. And the tamales just kind of rein everything in and right. it brings out a lot of the flavor components that you want. And just it kind of it creates a really, really interesting experience. So yeah. GABF is kind of like the high school reunion. Yeah, definitely. Well, you for see me. all of your friends, yeah. you see yeah. everybody that you haven't seen for a year, you get together again. Because, you know, it's like you in the craft beer community, it's so tight-knit and so wonderful and amazing. You make friends with people all over the country. Right. And obviously, you can't see them every week. No. But GABF is kind of like where everybody comes to kind of hang out. And, and it's just, it's so much fun seeing everybody that you haven't seen for a year. And, right. Steven, you ready for dessert? <laughs> <laughs> Chef, <laughs> Chef, tell us about this. First, you uh, get the malo. <laughs> So this is our s'mores cheesecake. It's on a bed of house-made uh, marshmallow fluff, and it has a uh, graham cracker crust and uh, dark chocolate mixed in with the cheesecake mixture, topped with brulee marshmallows, graham cracker crust, and milk chocolate chips. <laughs> oh my God. I paired um, one of my favorite milk stouts. It's a uh, left-hand milk stout. Is this on nitro? It is, yep. And then it's also got um, milk sugars added, you know, lactose. So historically, this is also known as a cream or sweet stout. Um, beautiful mouthfeel, awesome. Oh my God, have you tried this yet? Yeah, this is amazing. This makes me want to stop. I mean, it's kind mouth. of a no-brainer. I like to do stuff people aren't expecting, and this is kind of a obvious one, but you know, I just couldn't resist. Well, I think the obvious would be like more of a Imperial Russian stout, a bigger like maybe the Woot stout that we did earlier with the, well, the cup. The Imperial stouts are great with bitter dark chocolates. With this has kind of a, a milky chocolate and cheesecake. You don't normally pair with a, a stout. You pair it with something in the old ale, Porter Rain heavy, yeah, something okay. like that. But um, you can pair stouts with all across the bar with sweet things, but. Uh, I just like the way the creaminess with this and just really mellow and it's just great. they, like they complement each other. Yeah. Carries the gram and accentuates the milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I'm on my bottom third. Steven is, uh, Bill's a little behind, but that's okay. Uh, Slow smoker. Intensified, more of the anise now, um, more leather, uh, definitely wood, woodier. Uh, huge, going great with this beer. All the flavors get intensified in the bottom third, and they, and I think the sign of a really good cigar is when you can, when you're down at the bottom third, it's not, it's not like, uh, in your face. It's, it's right. still smokable. It's, it's still smokable. Yeah. It's still enjoyable, but all the flavors intensify as you get right. down there. A lot of Definitely. times they change, though. It'll be different, but this has stayed really true. It's had three or four components that have traveled all the way down the cigar. 
uh, which is really nice. Well, it's consistent. Yeah. Well, and if you look at Bill's cigar, you can see like the huge ash, and that is more about the cigar than it is about the smoker. We call it long ash, right. not huge ash. Although you have to be skilled at <laughs> Are doing we comparing it. Ashes? I like uh, big butts, but I oh. <laughs> Do you want to give your website? Good. You should give your website out. Sure. Um, so we're at a we're at Glazed and Confused. Donuts.com. So let me explain this first of all. Glazed and confused is spelled with a Z instead of an S. And then donuts is D O N U T S. It's kind of a tricky one to get out there, but uh, we. Um, is it is it a riff off of Dance and Confused? A little bit. Uh, yeah. The food here is great, guys. Definitely come in. Uh, not just next GABF, and they do. You do a slew of events. How many events are you doing this week? I think we had. 20 roughly yeah. on the docket because they uh, stack them throughout hours. the day right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty classic so when you come out here to denver if you've never been to gabf um like i think i mentioned on another episode this is my 25th time and i've been there, there's so many events it's just insane because uh, there's dozens of great places here and they all are stacking too so it's mm -hmm. really pick and choose but you can't go wrong any place you go in Denver. well yeah, yeah gabf turns denver into one huge downtown street party it's fun. just, yeah, I mean, you, you're you never at a loss for something to do. Even if you're not going to the fest, be here this week. Chris, how many events did you have this week? I believe it was 30. 30 events, okay. So Fresh Craft, you gotta step up, because they said 20. <laughs> so 30 events, it's insane. He has one every couple hours. You have an event coming up in about 15 minutes, don't 15 you? 15 minutes. What's uh, that one? I love uh, this one. It's called uh, Kill a Keg. <laughs> and uh, we noticed back about 10 years ago that we were uh, pouring a keg of Harvest Ale very fast. I mean, it was less than a half an hour, and we're like, I wonder, I wonder how fast we could actually pour a single keg of beer. Yeah. And so, uh, <clears throat> after a couple of uh, a couple of years where we ran out of people to serve to, the beers, the uh, the whole thing's become very popular. Right. The place is packed. We we literally opened up the doors 45 minutes ago, and there is hardly a place to stand right now. Right. Exactly. Why so, we're well, in this corner right here, and all the tables were were full. Right. And so what we do is we. Uh, I tap into one keg of Sierra Nevada Harvest Ale. Uh, some years we're actually pouring it six hours before the brewery is. Right. They'll 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 <laughs> nice. drive it out here. They've done right. all kinds of things to get here. But uh, I open up the tap and I just start filling pints of uh, beer, and we see how fast that, uh, we can pour that keg of beer. Right now, last year we did it in nine minutes and thirty six seconds. Denver down down here in this area, it's really a great place to come down and walk around. It's really turned into a beer district. You know, the Falling Rock kind of started it off right. back in the day, and since then, people like us, Euclid Hall, Lucky Pie around the corner, there's more concepts opening up. Right. Um, you can come down and have a good time, and whether it's GABF or not, you right. can have a beer cation mm -hmm. just in walking distance yeah. from where we are. Um, we'd be honored to be a stop for anybody. Fresh Craft is not just a craft beer bar. It's a phenomenal craft beer bar, but it's also, you have a full bar going on. Correct. I had a bacon-infused Bloody Mary this morning, which was delicious. So um, you're telling me there's nice. whiskey here? Oh, there's plenty of whiskey here. Yeah. Oh, no. whiskey. We'll never get Bill out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out Thank you and for uh, us. bringing it. Uh, I'm very happy. I think I'm going to go have another donut. So uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Cheers. All right, cheers. cheers. Thank you. I want to thank you guys all for watching another Master Pairings. Bill, thanks for being on. Steve, thank Steven, you guys. as thanks always. And uh, keep watching Master Pairings. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, everybody. Well, guys, thanks for having us. It was thank a great you. time. Great food, great beer, great Cheers. people. Thanks Cheers, you. everyone. And thanks for watching another Master Parent. Your address is 1919? That's us. Blake Street in Denver in Lodo. A great atmosphere, a lot of pubs around here, places. Just don't to park in the crawl. king's spot. Yeah, but a great area to come to. <laughs> don't only have to up. come to GABF. Matter of fact, in April, CBC and World Beer Cup are here. You're gonna have a slew of events for CBC and oh, World absolutely. Beer Cup. But Falling Rock's open uh, 365 days a year. Uh, we're, we're Wait, closed, I lied. But we're closed on Christmas Day and New Year Day. All right, 363, I, I bet I could get it. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to do that. But anyways, my friend, awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so Great much. Great food. Always thanks for the hospitality. This is my home away from home when I'm here. I always show up at least a dozen times, much to the chagrin of his staff. But they're very hospitable, a great place to come no matter how crowded it is. So cheers, everyone. Cheers. cheers. And thanks for watching another Master Parents.